No, come on, give Jesus a big shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Open your mouth, open your mouth. God is great and God is good. Yeah. Woo. All right, all right. Now listen, listen, listen. Sit down and be quiet. Y'all so loud? How's everybody this morning? Woo-hoo! So it's good to be back. We are so happy we were here during your family conference, and we had a great time, and we are so excited about today. Had a great first service, so I'm so thankful for your pastor. I love your pastor, Pastor Mauricio and Pastor Virginia. They are amazing, amazing, and I really appreciate the invite. I want to introduce you now to my superhero wife from the Marvel comic book, Storm, Pastor Kendra Graham. Come on, stand up. Come on. Come on, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. She has superpowers. She No, no, she does. I was telling first service that if you're sitting next to her, you got to have a mask on because she shoots her jewelry out. I don't know what it is. We'll be sitting there eating. I'm eating some shrimps or scrimps, if you're hood, like scrimps, and, and her earring will just go pew, and I'll be like pew, pew. So, I, so we eat, and I'm like pew, 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 pew. I have to do it. So I don't know what's in you, but it's coming out of you. It's oozing out of you. I appreciate you. All right, come on, give God a shout. Woo! Are you ready? All right, let's go. So you're in a series called See Beyond. Everybody say See Beyond. Beyond. Say it again, See See Beyond. And seeing beyond is about not being limited by your circumstances, right? So today we're going to take a journey. It was amazing first service, and we're going to take you on a journey today. And what I want to do today is I want to go through, and I'm going to show you some segments and some moments of my life but I want you to pay more attention to your life. I want to use those moments as triggers for you to think about the times that might be in your life might have been defining, some good maybe and some bad. And then we're going to get all the way through to Jesus Christ and why we need him today. Amen? All right, so let's go through your series scripture first. Let's get started. And we have 2 Corinthians 4.18. So let's read it all together. On the count of three, one, two, three. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's powerful, isn't it? So we can't be limited by what we see. So today I want to give you a little different perspective, and it's going to be a powerful journey. So let's go to the next one. Sometime when you talk about seeing, and you talk about seeing beyond, sometimes to see beyond, sometimes you have to see within. Sometimes you have to look within because let's face it. I love how your pastor says it. He says a new you, he said a new year doesn't make a new you. A new you makes a new year. Oh, that's so powerful. He's so brilliant. He's all philosophicalist. He's so brilliant. But I love how he said that, and it's so true. So what I want to do is take you on a journey today looking within because who you are and who you were created to be is what's important, right? God has, he has created you. The Bible says that he's written your name in a book, and before you were even born, he's written out every word. But how many of you know sometime life can come and change the words? Sometimes life can come and give you a distraction. Sometimes life can come and give you a detour. And we want to look at that today, and we want to make sure that we end up where we start, where we were supposed to start off with Jesus Christ. Amen? So sometimes to see beyond, we have to see within. Let's go to the next one. So my title today is called Naughty by Nature. Look at your neighbor. Be all, be all professional. Look at your neighbor. Say, hey. Are you naughty? <laughs> Some of y'all didn't say it right. Come on, you didn't say it right. You were all perfect. Are you naughty? Come on, that ain't, that ain't naughty. Come on, look at your neighbor again. Say, hey, hey. hey. Are you naughty? <laughs> Some of the people that are all serious, they're like, who? Who? So my, my title today is Naughty by Nature. How many of you guys know we were born naughty by nature? Come on, that's not, that was a group. They had a little song out. We ain't going to get into the song because it's debatable. But they would be like this, like this, like this, you know. And, and we were born naughty by nature. I was born naughty by nature. You were born naughty by nature. And today I'm going to give you a different perspective of Jesus. Because sometimes we pre-label Jesus and we put Jesus in a corner. And how many of you know you can't put the king of the universe in a box? You can't put the king of the universe in a corner. But we tend to do it with some of our words. So we say Jesus came to forgive us our 
sins. And if you ask people why Jesus came, they'll say to forgive us our sins. But the Bible says he came for many other different reasons. In the book of John, it says that Jesus was born. He said, I came into the world to tell the truth. That's one of the main reasons why Jesus was born, to tell the truth. Why? Because the system, the world, Nick, was dark. And it was full of deception. But today, I'm going to give you another thing in just a moment of why Jesus came into this earth, why Jesus came to save us, and it's not just to forgive us of our sins. Everybody say, naughty, naughty. by nature. All right, here we go. Let's look at the book of Hebrews right now, and let's get started. It says, fixing our eyes. Everybody say, eyes. On Jesus. So I'm supposed to fix my eyes on Jesus. Now watch. The author and finisher of our faith. He's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. But these words mean something. So author, and this is important, author actually means to commence in order of time. So it's not just that he's writing something down. He's commencing something in order of time. So let's say it like this, alpha or the beginning. He is the beginning and he's setting off something in me that is the beginning of something else. Then it comes back and says he is the finisher. Everybody say finisher. But it says complete and make perfect. Now this is huge today. So Jesus starts off, sends Mark Graham down there. And he has a plan, and he has a created purpose for my life. So he starts it off. But then it says to make complete. But how many of you know Jesus, when he starts something, it's already complete? So something has happened to Mark in between the authoring and the finishing. Because he's got to come back in between and make it complete and finish it and make it perfect. So now watch this. Between the authoring and between the finishing, Mark has life. And that life is naughty by nature. And I can't fulfill God's plan if I'm naughty. Right? I can do it if I'm nice, but not if I'm not there. So watch. Verse 3. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. Tucking him out Jesus. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus doesn't want you to grow weary. But here's the key. Grow weary in what? Next. In your struggle against sin. Now I want to park here for a second. And one of the things we teach in our church. And I, want, I know Pastor Mauricio does an excellent job with this. That a lot of Christians don't understand sin. They don't understand the word. They don't understand what it means. So if we look at this at first glance. It says he doesn't want you to get tired in your struggle against sin. So sin in the Greek is humaritaro. Say humaritaro. That's a big old word, right? And literally it means to miss the mark and not get the prize at the end. So, but it also has some deeper meanings. And when you really study it out, Jesus says, I don't want you to get tired in your struggle against your sinful nature. Now that's different than sin. If we say sin, we say, okay, lying, uh, I'm not going to lie anymore, I'm not going to cheat anymore, not going to steal, not going to fornicate, not going to commit adultery, not going to steal from my neighbor, not going to use God's name in vain. We start putting this word and making it into a box, and we start making it behavior. That's not the struggle, and this is really important today. Your struggle is not against behavior. Your struggle is, a, is against your nature that wants to behave that way. Oh, that's big. Somebody should clap. Why I got to tell you to clap? Right? So really, is it about the lie or is it about the fact that when I'm confronted with the truth, I choose to lie? So can we be honest? Since we're naughty by nature, born that way, and we, and we tend to go through that, no matter what we say we're not going to do, we're going to pick something else to do. That's why New Year's resolutions don't work. I'm not going to drink no more. So I start smoking a pound of weed a day. Come on, man. No, 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 I have a medical condition. Now, if you smoke weed for a medical condition, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying that we pick things, right? We pick things. And you know why? Because your nature is craving things. And that's the whole point. If your nature is naughty, it's going to crave naughty things. So Jesus did not come to stop you from lying. You ready for this? He came to replace your nature. So, oh, you clapping. Woo! 
He came to replace your nature so you don't want to lie and you tell the truth. So you don't want to fornicate. So you don't want to lie and cheat. Does this make sense? So it's powerful. He says, I want you to resist this thing, and I don't want you to be weary in your struggle against your nature, which is sinful. That's huge. Oh, that's huge. And so in between the author and the finisher, I have this naughty by nature that wants to grab things that disappoint God, wants to grab things that stops my intimacy with God, wants to grab things that makes me hide from the presence of the living God, and only that presence can change my nature. So Jesus is telling us something here. Let's go to the next one. Now watch. Life is in between the author and the finisher, but your life can be without him. Most of us have not, we were not born and just walked with Christ the whole time. Most people take a detour. Most people get distracted. I have people in my church now. We, our church is growing, and it's full of people that have never been in church. So it's so amazing. I have to text them every day, and I text them from pray.com, and I'll text them a prayer, Nick, and say, hey, don't forget to pray today because they've never been in church other than like a funeral or a wedding. Sometimes they're the same thing, funeral or wedding. They said, oh, that wasn't nice. Come out of the family conference. <laughs> but they've never been in church, so, so they don't know what to do. So they've had this life, right? And this life has been driven by naughtiness. And now they come to Christ, and they don't know what to do. Let me share a little bit about my life with you. Let's go to the first one. Oh, my shoe came untied. I don't want to fall in front of y'all. I got me some new shoes. Oh, not the baby. Let me keep the baby. I love the baby. Had more hair then than now. That sucks. So that's 1967. Can I say something? Life was perfect then. Right? I ain't had no girl problems. I do two things: poop and sleep. That's like that's like the life. I do the same thing now. My wife says, "Please stop." No. So at 1967, I'm released. Can I tell you this? This is huge revelation, right, about babies. I just left God. The Bible says he knew you before the foundations of the earth. So I was in heaven. God decided to release me. I'm in my mom's tummy nine months. I come out, you know, a little less than a year. It's 1967. But I still know God. That's so good. I still know God. But then I have to grow up. I can't stay like that. Let's go to the next one. Fight the power. <clears throat> Fight the power. Okay. So, so I'm the one on the left, right? It's my best friend. It's 1978. It's fifth grade. But guess what? Things are not like they were when I was that baby. Some stuff is happening. I got a bully in my life. Always takes my lunch money. Oh, I'm sorry, always takes, my, always takes my lunch money, and it's a hard time. And one day I decided to stand up. I said, you ain't taking my lunch money no more. I was so scared I didn't eat the lunch. Oh, he said, I'm going to beat you up after lunch. I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. But I stood up that day. But something happened that was terrible that day. I got in a fight with the bully and won. And I created this switch inside of me that sent me on a path of violence. I became violent that day. I wasn't violent before. I was created with a purpose. I was supposed to be a pastor. I was in children's choir. I was in Sunday school. I love God. Um, you're not going to believe this, but when I was little, I memorized the whole book of 1 Kings. Stood up in front of the church, ripped the whole book. Not a chapter. The book. I was anointed and called. But stuff started happening to me in between the authoring and the finishing. And my nature got naughtier. And my thing was violence and anger. I don't know what yours is today. I want you to think about it. So I was incredibly violent and incredibly angry. My friend right there, one day he came over to my house, and I was like, he ran through the door, and I was like, what's up, what's up? I ain't going to say his name because we're, we're audio, audio taping it. But he came in, and he was just breathing hard. He was crying. I said, what happened? And so that day, his dad was an alcoholic, so he grew up with an alcoholic father. So he was basically fatherless. And that day, his father had shot at him and his mom. Bullets were in the fence and stuff. I, I lived in a hood, and people just kind of was like acting crazy. And so he, that set him off, and he ended up doing time in prison. Do you think he thought he would ever go to prison while we were taking this picture? That was on Easter. He never thought, but guess what? Life comes. Life comes, and we don't stay a baby. Next. So I started going. He started going. Don't worry about the writing. That was me doing gibberish, right? 
So this is 1990 now. That was fifth grade. Now I'm graduating from college. Now that seems like a good thing. Clap. Come on, I said I was growing up in the hood, graduated from college. Y'all should be like, ooh, that's so good, that's so good. <laughs> so I graduated from Purdue University, right? But the thing is, the picture's deceiving because that's when I was 23. I was supposed to graduate when I was 22. I didn't graduate when I was, when I was 22 because I got in a fight. How many of you guys have ever been to a toga party? You ever know what a toga party? That's old school. Like young people don't do togas no more. It's like being in a bathrobe and just being full of wasted, drunk, whatever. What's the word you use now? Whatever. <laughs> so you, everybody's in their bathrobe, right? So I'm at I'm at this party. I'm doing my thing, and I'm standing. There, and I was a peacemaker. I was really kind of peaceful, sort of, kind of, right? Wanted to be a peacemaker. So. There was a big fight. I got in the middle. I tried to break it up. Long story short, the person I was breaking it up with swung and hit me. I still didn't care because I was a little, what's the word? Um, toe up. Okay. So anyway, so you don't have to think about that. So I was still drunk, so I didn't care. But then they jumped me on the ground and started kicking me. So now Mr. Fifth Grade, who's grown up now, comes back out. I'm naughty by nature, and now I'm more violent than I was then. So I basically get dressed, go get the boys, we go to the house, knock on the door, the first guy opens the door, we throw him out the second story window, he's done, he's out the window, boom, go in there, I go, I look in the bedroom, the dude that hits me is asleep, I'm like, I know you just didn't hit me and take a nap, <laughs> you took a nap, so I woke his butt up, okay, so we start fighting, beat him up, I get kicked out of college, get suspended from Purdue, I have a full-time job offer from 3M Company, full-time job, ready to graduate, but I can't because the distance between the authoring and the finishing has kicked in. My nature is naughty, and I am exposed, watch this, exposed to Jesus, but I don't have a relationship with Jesus. Ooh, the worst thing you can do is be exposed to the cure and not take it. I didn't take it, so I'm around God and church stuff, but I'm not trying to live like that. I'm not, nobody ever told me growing up, it's a daily relationship. I need to talk daily. I need to pray daily. I need to worship daily. I need to get in the word daily. How can you be daily with Jesus? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. If I open up my word every day, I'm with Jesus. But I didn't learn that growing up. I learned go to church on Sunday, kick it Monday through Saturday, come back on Sunday and say, you sorry. <laughs> so now... I'm a mess, but I made it. I graduated. Next. Now here, thank you. Yeah, I know. I, I got to put a, next time I'm bringing a clap sign. Like. That's me at 70. So I put myself in a filter. <laughs> You're like, you should have stopped that. <laughs> I put myself in a filter, and I made a promise. I made an inner vow. I have four children. I'll have seven grandchildren under the age of seven by next June. My house be full, man. My house looks like Toys R Us on Christmas. <laughs> but I did this on purpose, and I want you to do it. I don't want to be the same person I was. I don't want to be naughty by nature. I want to be who God created me. I want to be what the author said so he don't have to do a lot of work on the finishing. So I aged myself to 70 and said, by the time I'm 70, my wife... My four kids, my seven, maybe ten grandchildren, I got to give me a bus. <laughs> I want them to know who God created me to be. You have to set a goal. So I set a goal that I'm not going to be naughty anymore at this age. And hopefully I'm walking so close with Jesus that my legacy, my, the next generation, they don't have an option to serve God because they see me walking with God. Amen. That they're not just exposed to God. Now, my grandkids are sick. My wife will tell you. They sick. Papa, I'll pray. They, they have faith, and I have to keep that. I have to keep them strong in their faith, and they got to know that Papa should tell you, I got like the magic touch. Any kid crying, any baby crying, I hold them, boom, they're gone. They're out of sleep. I'm trying to give them peace, but I wasn't a carrier of peace before. I was a carrier of rage. I didn't calm down situation. I didn't calm that situation down. I was trying to be a peacemaker. I didn't calm it down because I wasn't calm. But the Bible says be a peacemaker. I was created to be a peacemaker. I was created to be a pastor. I was created to make people's lives better, not make it worse. But while I was confused, while I was in internal conflict, 
I made the people I love life bad, especially hers. So I got to do better. And I got to make sure at 70, I'm 52 now. I'm 52 now. I got to make sure that I have it right. I got to make sure that God can trust me 100%. If you're in the hood, you say 100. 100%. Let's go. Does that make sense? Are you learning something? Okay, so now that's, that's what happened in between. Naughty by nature, exposed to Jesus, but no relationship. Not taught every day I got to come. So now let's go to the next one. Now I want to show you where this happens, and all of us are impacted, not just me. That's just my story. I want you to think about what is your story today. Were there moments where your nature was growing? Now, let me do this before we get into this one. I didn't explain it. I'm sorry. Let me explain what your nature is. Everybody say nature. nature. It's so powerful and so important. A lot of times we say, oh, that's their nature. But the word nature is the Greek word phusis. P-H-O-O-S-I-S. -O -O -S -S. And it's so powerful, and it's, it's huge once you understand it. So in Ephesians 2, 3, it says, we were by nature children of wrath. Well, think about my story. Wrath, anger, violence. So what God is saying that all of us, even though you might not have expressed it that way, all of us are children of anger or children of wrath, right? But the word nature is the Greek word phusis, and it has two parts. Say two. The first part is it's called your prevailing tendencies. The second part of the word is structure or constitution. Now watch this. When we say nature, we mean your prevailing tendencies on a daily basis in which you structured your life. Ooh, that was good. Probably was a clap too. <laughs> it's not as impactful after. So when I say nature, I mean the prevailing tendencies on a daily basis that I've structured my life around. So watch this. Here's what I did. I had my, I call it my Bill of Rights, right? And you know, the Constitution has a Bill of Rights. So I had my Bill of Rights. My number one Bill of Rights was this. If you take my kindness for weakness, you get the devil. And I didn't know that I was living by this code, but I had amended my Constitution. Because the author, Jesus, didn't create me to be violent. He created me to be a peacemaker. But when I was a peacemaker, things happened to me. So I made an inner vow and I amended, watch this, my constitution. Oh, our constitution in America has amendments. So I amended mine. And I said, if you take my kindness for weakness, you can going to get, okay, anyways. <laughs> I feel it like coming up. I got to push it back down. But that's what happened at Purdue, Right? Kind, hey, you guys. I say, hey, man, we're just partying. Why don't everybody calm down? Boom. Takes my kindness for weakness. Who did he meet? The devil. He goes. To the, he was in the hospital two weeks. Broke his ribs, jaw. It was something. I wasn't called to do that. But I structured my life, and so now it became my tendency that if you take advantage of my grace and mercy, you get all the evil. So I have to think about that, and I have to let Jesus. We're going to talk about this in a moment. I have to let Jesus come and redo my constitution. That's what it meant by finish. Mark, I didn't create you like that. Mark, I didn't create you to be this way. Mark, I created you to be a peacemaker, to spread joy so that people's joy is fulfilled. I created you to be a pastor and shepherd people. I created you to reach people getting out of jail. I created you to reach homeless people. So now, our company at our church, we've transported and reached over 10,000 people getting out of jail. We go every single day, seven days a week, 9 a.m., 3 p.m., and 11 p.m. And that's what we do, and that's what I was created to do. So my tendencies and my structure were naughty. Only Jesus can change it. So where did it come from? Our first parents, Adam. Genesis 3.8. And watch this. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Who is this? Who are we talking about? Adam and Eve. In the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the what? Trees of the garden. Now, I could just park there and stop there. The trees of the garden, hops, barley, weed. <laughs> A lot of people are hiding in some trees. <laughs> Woo, you should have clapped. Forget it. Don't do it. Too late. Some of y'all like, oh, I was in a tree last night, man. <laughs> hey, and there's two of you today, man. <laughs> so, 
So Adam and Eve, they hide, you guys, from God. They hide from Zoe life. And they hide, Pastor Kim, they hide in the trees. But God calls them out. And the Lord God called out to Adam and said, where art thou? Now, this is big, right? This is big. Does God need to know where they're at? It's a rhetorical question. God says, where art thou? To make them think about where they were. Now, when you look at this and you just hear where art thou, you think he's just asking a question about location. He's not asking a question about location. He's asking a question about state. Now, watch this. This is so powerful. The Old Testament is written in Hebrew. And if you look at the Hebrew word for where art thou, this is what it means. Go to the next one for me, please. It's the Hebrew word I in. Everybody say I in. So here's what it sounded like. I in. I in. Adam and Eve were hiding in the tree, and they heard, I in. God's like, I know you're in the tree, but I in. I in, this is so powerful, means fatherless, unsearchable. This is literally what it means. It means you don't exist in your original state. It literally means nothing. So watch. God comes down. He walked in the cool of the day. Doesn't see Adam and Eve. They're hiding in the tree. They're shaking. He sees this sh tree shaking. And he comes and says, nothing. He comes to his children. Fatherless. You are now fatherless. Nothing without me. And you don't exist in your original state. Now, you ready? This is what happened to me and maybe some of you. Adam's original state, remember the author? His created purpose for the first time in his life. There's a distance between his created purpose and his reality now. His new normal. He was created with a holy nature. Created in God's image and God's likeness. Likeness in the Hebrew means to function. And now he's naughty by nature. He has tendencies and structure that disobey his life. Creator. The Zoe life of God. And God says, you're not my son anymore. Now you start to see the introduction of Jesus. So I need to send my son to restore my other sons and daughters. Because they're fatherless. I didn't create you to be orphans, God is saying. But now you're fatherless. Now this is huge. This is going to explain a lot to you if you're younger. We're wrapping it up. You ready? Are you learning something today? Yes. Now you have to get this. Put it in your phone. Text yourself. Like send a message and say, hey, sexy, and text yourself. <laughs> okay? This next slide is going to explain so much in your life. Watch this. The distance between your created purpose and your nature is conflict and confusion. And conflict and confusion repel resources. What? I can love God and repel the resources of heaven out of my life. Why? Because I'm not living my created purpose. I'm naughty by nature. Does this make sense? The distance between what you were created to do and what you're living like now. The distance creates conflict and confusion. And people don't invest in conflict. People don't invest in confusion. And God sure does it. Come here for me, Nick. Come here for me. And come here, my friend. Are you the drummer? Man, you was killing it. I'm so hood. I'm supposed to be like professional. You're a very nice drummer and you were on the beat. <laughs> Turn around for them. So watch this. At Starbucks, both of these guys. What, what's your name, bro? Anthony. Anthony, right. So Anthony and Nick are at Starbucks and they're sitting down there and they both, you're like, yeah, yeah. Alante, Vente, Grande, whatever. <laughs> I don't speak Starbucks, right? So they both want to start a business, right? I come to Starbucks. I'm a venture capitalist. I'm in a suit and I'm in a tie. Anybody know what a venture capitalist is? Yeah. What do they do? They invest in startup businesses, right? So I'm the answer from God. I happen to be drinking that day a Starbucks, and they're here at Starbucks. So I roll up, and we're having a conversation. I hear them talking, and I say, hey, what kind of business do you want? I want you to respond, duh. So I'm like, what, what kind of business do you want to do? Duh. And then I go to Nick. You just make up something. I say, what kind of business do you want to start up? A restaurant. A restaurant. 
Okay, now watch. I'm a venture, venture capitalist. It's my money. Where would you put your money? <laughs> Mr. Confusion. <laughs> Mr. Duh. His business is called D-U-H. <laughs> right? Nick's business is the restaurant. Watch, this is powerful. So as a venture capitalist with resources, I bring my resources to the one that's not confused. He doesn't know what he would do with my resources. So I'm not going to waste my resources on Mr. Duh. <laughs> this is, so you go sit down. Duh. <laughs> Come here, Nick. This is where I spend my time. Now listen. Some of you today have great dreams and great vision, and God has a purpose for you. And you've been thinking about it. But Habakkuk 2, 2, and 3, write the vision down and make it plain so those that can read it can run with it. If you don't know what you want to do, then God's not going to invest in you. Conflict and confusion repel people and repel resources. Does that make sense? Thank you, Nick. Make sense? So, if my original nature is dominating, I am in conflict and I am confused because like Adam, there's a distance. Look what happened immediately after Adam got confused. One son killed the other. I was destroying the next generation. I was destroying my kids. They're 30-something today, 20-something. They still have issues today because I was confused when I was raising them. Now I'm trying to do better with the grandbabies. But I got to do a lot of work with my own kids. Why? Because they were raised not under peace. They were raised in me being turned up all the time. And guess what two issues my boys have? Being turned up. Does that make sense? We're in the car driving. Somebody cuts us off. I start chasing them. Ah! They're in the back seat. Now they overreact. I'm like, you're overreacting. They look at me like, duh. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. So I have to do better. I can't be who I was then when I'm 70. Now watch. Enter Jesus. Enter why we need salvation. Last one. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. And Jesus did not just come to save us from our sins. Please leave with this. He came to replace your nature. Because it's sinful and it pulls sin. You stop doing one sin with the same nature, you'll do another one. Jesus wants to replace that craving. He wants to replace that craving. How does he do it? Watch the scripture. And I hate it that we take scriptures that are popular and we just quote them and don't connect with them right because scripture is Jesus for God so loved the world and we just all oh, John 3 16 Austin 3 16 everybody using it you know what I'm saying right right <laughs> I'm so hood it's just terrible for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son who is that Je the father gave Jesus for what that whoever believes in him should not what perish but have everlasting life perishing is not just going to hell I could be perishing right now some of you feel like you're perishing right now if I'm not living my creative purpose I am perishing right now and I don't want to perish Jesus came so that I don't perish that I am successful and driven by my purpose in him that's why Jesus came Woo! I'm trying for God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but the world through him might be saved. Live an abundant life right now. Elevate your life right now. Live an elevated life. See beyond. See beyond. See beyond where you're at. But you can only do it through Christ. And you can only do it through a daily, a daily relationship. And I'm going to end and I'm going to show you what Jesus does. Next. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who doesn't believe, you're condemned already. Go to the next one for me. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation. Watch this, Pastor Kendrick, that the light has come into the world. Jesus kept trying to intervene when I was being naughty by nature, and I didn't want to hear it. I was exposed, and I thought exposure was enough. Exposure is not enough. Only relationship is because Lucifer was exposed. But he became naughty by nature. So exposure, being around God, isn't enough. Being connected to God is everything and we forget that and men love darkness I love darkness I would feel good when I was turned up I could feel that rush right I was like the joker in dark night you think I have a plan <laughs> do I look like a man with a plan <laughs> I love darkness and I love movies <laughs> That the light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, 
Why? Because their deeds were evil. When we're living naughty by nature and not confronting and dragging that nature, can I tell you this? You need to drag your nature into the presence of God every day. Every day, every day, so God can ignite you to be who he's created you to be. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come into the light. You know why? Lest their deeds should be exposed. You and I need to be exposed in the presence of God on a daily basis. And if we're not exposed, you ready? Ready for this? Your nature will stay like it is. It won't get disrupted and your tendencies will be the same over and over. And you'll begin to structure your life around your tendencies. You have to drag that thing into the presence of God. Everyday worshiping, everyday reading, and let the Holy Spirit say, no, 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 no. I know you want to get revenge on your coworker, but vengeance is mine. I will repay because when I strike vengeance, it's fair. And you have to step back and put your hands up where you would normally put your hands on. Jesus is a nature disruptor. It's huge. So that our deeds are clearly seen that they may be done in God. At 70, you guys, I want my deeds to be done in God. I want my wife to not be so happy when I die. <laughs> I wish I could tell you different. I'm a pastor. I, I bury thousands of people. And some of the wives are like, Phew. no, I'm being honest. Yeah, if you live with a tyrant, you would too. If you live with an emotional terrorist, you would too. Am I lying? Some people are like, they don't want them to die, but they're relieved. I don't want her to be relieved. I want her crying and snot and crawling. I want to at least look like it. Please, please do that. I don't want my children to be like, that tyrant is gone. I need Jesus. But I need a relationship. I need every day. And some of you are trying to be delivered from things. Can I tell you this? You can't deliver yourself. If you could deliver yourself, you wouldn't need to be delivered. Let's just, come on. If you could save yourself, you wouldn't need to be saved. You can't go to heaven trying to be better. You can't be better. You need your nature replaced. That's what Jesus does. He don't just come to save you from your sins. He comes to save you from the thing that want to sin. You don't have two natures. You don't have a competing nature. You have a new nature from Christ and an old nature memory in your soul. And your soul is trying to get you to go backwards. Your soul likes naughty by nature. Your body definitely likes naughty by nature. Your soul and your body team up against your spirit. And guess what? If you don't feed your spirit on a daily basis from the word of God, your soul and body win. Two dogs in a fight. Which dog wins? The one that's strong and the one you feed. If I starve one dog and make him fight a pit bull that I've been feeding, the pit bull wins. Not because he's a pit bull, but because I've been feeding him. Which nature are you feeding? The naughty one or the nice one? Come on, give God a shout.